Hello viewers, welcome to this video lecture series on analysis and design of algorithms. Today's topic of discussion is on analysis of non-recursive algorithms. So here in this subject you have to study the analysis of various algorithms that, in, that means using different approaches. So analysis of recursive algorithms also you need to study as well analysis of non-recursive algorithms also you need to study. So first you should know the difference between a recursive function and non-recursive function. Uh, just I uh, have written over here the main difference between the recursive function and non-recursive function. A recursive function is one which calls itself within its definition. A non-recursive function does not call itself. Basically when do you use this uh, recursive type of functions? When you have the task divided into similar subtasks. So you are carrying out operations on the main task. Further you have divided the main task into subtasks. And for each of the subtasks also you need to operate with the same steps. So that time you are going to call the function again. So a function is calling itself. So that is how you make use of the recursive functions. In non-recursive functions what is that you are doing? Non-recursive functions basically makes use of the for loop, while loop and do while loop in order to carry out the repetition of the statements. Here first example what you are learning is what a non-recursive algorithm. You can take any example to carry out the analysis of a non-recursive algorithm. At present whatever algorithm I have chosen here is the to check whether all the elements in a given array of n elements are distinct. So you are passing an array with certain elements and you want to see is there any element that is getting repeated. You try to give the elements of an array in all different possible uh, ways. First time you try to see that you are giving only unique elements in the array and see how the algorithm will work here. Second time you try to give uh, element which is getting repeated and repetition also definitely matters here whether the very first element and the second element are similar that means the repetition the algorithm has found the repetition of the element immediately or it is finding that repetition at the end or in between so all these possible types of inputs you have to give so that you can analyze the various time efficiencies here because every time you have to think of what uh, what is the best case efficiency the worst case efficiency and the average case efficiency so let us take an example here and this is the algorithm so one if you look at the approach it is a brute force approach because here also it is making use of all the options exhaustively and uh, to write any pseudocode for any algorithm always write first what exactly is this algorithm in the first comment line so you can write down here the first comment line is to determine the elements in a given array of n elements first comment line you can write to check whether elements in a given array are unique second comment line you have to write down about the array you are passing an array because every algorithm as you have learned in the introductory chapter it is very important to specify what input that algorithm has is expecting so that you have to be very clear so you write here very clearly we have to pass an array and the indices are from 0 to n minus 1 then output is what output is it is returning true if all the elements in a array are distinct if all the elements are unique it returns true otherwise it returns false so we are making use of two for loops here. The first for loop will keep track of the elements in the array. The second for loop that is the inner for loop will keep track of the comparisons for each of the element. Then you will check here whether each element is unique or not. And we, uh, for this to understand I will trace this pseudocode. So this is how if you want you can give a scope of the various loops also which you are using. So this is your outer foremost loop. This is the inner for loop. This is the outer for loop. This is the inner for loop and this if statement is there, okay, if a of i, since you have only one statement here, you can close this flower brace here. That means if this condition is, if a of i is equal to a of j, it will return false. If a of i is not equal to a of j, then it will return true. So now like, let us take one example, uh, array of elements. So what, so normally what I am going to do is first I will take in this manner the array elements. I am not going to take distinct elements. So let me take first element as 8, second element as also 8, then 3, 4, 9. Simply randomly I have chosen like this. So I will write the index, index for each of these elements 1, 2, 3, 4. Now this uh, on this complete list of elements for which you are using the two for loops. So first for loop is the outermost for loop will work from i equal to 0 to n minus 2. So n is 5 here. What we have taken n is 5. So n minus 2 will be what 3. So i will operate from 0 to 3. And if you look here j, j is i plus 1 to n minus 1. So j is 
operating from i plus 1 to n minus 1. If this is the case, then what is that? j will be what? Uh, 0 plus 1, 1 to n minus 1, 4. So this way you just see i is from 0 to 3 and j is from 1 to 4. So same thing if you want, uh, just write here also. i is operating from 0 to 3. So from here to here. So i pointer gets incremented from this to this, this to this, it will stop here only. So and j will start from 1 to 4. So j is starting from 1 and it will end to 4. So j will be 1, 2, 3, 4. So let us trace this program. I will write here also. In the first pass, we are taking i equal to 0. So j will be what? 0 plus 1. J, j first value will be 1. The next it will get incremented to 2, 3, 4. So you can see here in the first pass, this many comparisons are required. So let us see. So i is pointing here. j is pointing here. i is pointing here and j is pointing here. And the first element is what? If a of i, if a of i is equal to a of j, if a of i is what? a of i is 8, whether 8 is equal to 8, a of i equal to a of j, whether 8 is equal to 8, yes, it is true. In the very first comparison itself, you found that there is a repetition of the element. The second element in the array is same like that of the first element. So you are carrying out an algorithm wherein you want to check whether all the elements are unique. In this case, whatever input you gave, it is not at all a distinct array. So, it, the algorithm exits here and you are going to get the output that elements in the array are not distinct. So, how much time the algorithm has spent? Very minimum because it has just taken one comparison. Here itself. If you, I, think it is, uh, I think now you can understand this after you have learned the selection sort. Selection sort also uses this kind of approach. So also start with the first pass with i equal to 0. In the second pass it will start from i equal to 1. j will be what in the second pass? 1 plus 1, 2. And j next time will be 3. j next time will be 4. So in the third pass i equal to 2. And j will be what? i plus 1. So j will be j equal to 3 and j equal to 4. Right? And in the fourth pass i gets incremented by 1. i equal to 3. j is what? i plus 1. So 3 plus 1, 4. j equal to 4. These many comparisons are there in this particular uh, algorithm. So, if you look here, uh, it will stop. Four, only four passes. Uh, I will start from 0 to 3. 0 to 3. Okay. And J is having what? The different number of comparisons under each pass. The number of comparisons get decreases by 1 in each pass. Now, you have got the output for the very first kind of input. So, you can say that the time efficiency of this algorithm because you are going to get it in the very first comparison, the best case efficiency is what it is order of 1. It is a constant. Now we will check for what the worst case efficiency. Normally for most of the algorithms, average case efficiency and worst case efficiency are C. Now we will change the input elements here. I am not going to give this 8 here. Okay. Then we have to check how many number of comparisons it will make. i is pointing here and j is pointing here. Then the very first time what will happen, it will compare a of i is equal to a of j. No, it is not equal to a of j. Then j will get incremented by 1. Then whether a of i is equal to a of j, whether 8 is equal to 3, no, it is not equal to 3. Then what will happen, j will get incremented by 1. So j is pointing here. A of i is 8, whether 8 is equal to 4, no it is not equal to 4. Then it will come over here. Then what is that you are observing? Uh, next time when A of i is equal to A of j, A of j is 8, 8 is equal to 8, yes it is true. If it is true, then what is that the output you will get? You will get the elements are not unique. So in this kind of input, what is that you have observed? After this first comparison, second comparison, third comparison, fourth comparison. So at this point of time, you came to know that the elements are not distinct. So this is just one kind of input. You can place this okay, same element anywhere here in the list and try to check, check after how many comparisons you are going to get the output here as elements not distinct. That means you have checked here four comparisons. Sometime you may get after this, sometime you may get after this, after this, after this, after this or after this. Suppose if you want to see that, yes for all comparisons, for all values of i and for all 
values of j the algorithm is operating then only you are finally getting the output as elements of the array are not distinct for that you have to place the elements in this manner you place like this okay here you just write down any other number so in this case what i have done is the last two elements i have kept it same now let us check how many comparisons it is going to carry out so all these i have placed here these are the possible number of comparisons so i is pointing here and j is pointing here a of i is equal to a of j no not equal to j then increment the value of j whether a of i is equal to a of j no not equal to j increment the value of the a of i is equal to j no not equal to j then increment the value of j then a of i is equal to a of j no it is not equal to a of j so that means in the first pass after you did all these four comparisons you did not find any repetition of the element so that now next time what you will do is you will start the next pass in the next pass i will point here and j will point here whether a of i is equal to a of j no it is not equal then increment j whether a of i is equal to a of j no it is not equal to j then increment j now j is pointing here whether a of i is equal to a of j no it is not equal so the number of comparisons for the j has ended here and you did not find any same element so in the second pass also when you carried out for all these three comparisons you did not find next time what you are doing is you are now going to the third pass i equal to 2 so now i value is pointing to this one now i value is pointing to 3 and j value is i plus 1 so j will point to now you are in the third pass i equal to 2 element is 3 so a of i is 3 a of j is 8 whether a of i is equal to a of j no not equal to j increment the value of j you are here now the a of i is equal to a of j no it is not equal then what is that the number of comparisons for the j has ended here and you did not find any repetition of the element that means in this third pass also you did two comparisons and you did not find next is you are moving now to the fourth pass wherein you are point your i is pointing to the index 3 and j is pointing to the index 4 this is the one which you are now currently carrying out so a of i is 8 a of j is 8 now when you do a of i is equal to a of j yes it a of i is equal to a of j now 8 is equal to 8 fine that means in the last comparison you found that elements are repeated then that so you have done this comparison also when you get the output only at the end of the last comparison that means the algorithm has taken maximum amount of time to complete its task the basic operation has got executed maximum number of times here definitely the time efficiency of the algorithm will be what we have to call it as the worst case efficiency so in this case the worst case efficiency will be how much if you are looking here you can easily carry out even in the comparison uh, the frequency count method also you can carry out but now you should also learn how to find out the time efficiency using the summation method so that i'll explain here in all the possible uh, tracing whatever i carried out till now we found that elements are not distinct suppose if elements are distinct then what will be the time efficiency if elements are distinct then i have to give all unique elements fine 4 9 3 7 8 when i give all unique elements to find out yes the array is unique even in that case the number of comparisons that has to be carried out will be maximum so same like what the previous case only when you placed two similar elements at the end the number of comparisons that were carried out are maximum when you are having a list with unique elements even then in that case the number of comparisons are what maximum so worst case will happen under two scenarios first case first scenario is which one when the last two elements are same and the second scenario is which one when all the elements in the array are unique so that is how you have to find out now we will see the time complexity of this algorithm so normally we are uh, now carrying out for the worst case so worst case time complexity is how much look at the I'll start writing from here worst case time complexity is how much first uh, for loop outer for loop it operates from i equal to 0 to n minus 2 and then the inner for loop operates from j equal to i plus 1 n minus 1 and inside these two loops is what your basic operation if a of i equal to a of j there is one statement which is the main statement here 
and complete efficiency depends on this particular statement only how many number of times it is getting executed here how will you simplify the next step summation of i equal to 0 n minus 2 summation of i plus 1 n minus 1 so how will you simplify here i equal to 0 n minus 2 i plus 1 n minus 1 and inside whatever you had 1 this one further simplification this i equal to 0 to n minus 2 this one how will you simplify here you have the upper limit and here you have the lower limit so it is n minus 1 minus of i plus 1 okay this and this one is already there this is plus 1 so this is based on the formula summation of okay i equal to lower bound upper bound and one suppose if you have any this is the standard formula for which you are going to write upper bound minus of lower bound okay plus 1. This is given in the textbook also. All the basic summation formulas are given. So, you can refer those formulas. So, same formula I am applying here and I got up till this one. Now, further simplification, you, this one will be what? Summation of i equal to 0 n minus 2 n minus 1 minus i. So, this one is what? n minus 1 minus of i plus 1. So, open the bracket n minus 1 minus i plus into minus minus 1 and this one is already this uh, plus 1 minus 1 will cancel and you will have summation of i equal to 0 n minus 2 n minus 1 minus i now so in this what you have to do is in place of i here you substitute first time i equal to 0 second time i equal to 1 so third time i equal to 2 up till n minus 2 because you can see the range from 0 to n minus 2 that means 0 1 2 3 up till n minus 2 so this part will simplify here now first time in place of i, I will write down 0, okay, plus second time n minus 1 minus, in place of i, I will write it as 1, third time n minus 1, okay, minus of 2, so I am just, you can see here, i is 0, i is 1, i is 2, like this it will continue up till where, up till n minus 2, so n minus 1 minus of this in place of i, it is now n minus 2. So, further simplification, here you will get n minus 1, here you will get n minus 2 and here you will get n minus 3, so on. Here, what is the simplification? n minus 1 minus n minus into minus plus 2 plus n minus n get cancelled plus 2 minus 1 is what? Plus 1. So, here is what? Yeah, this one. So, this is the expression you got here and how will you further write, further simplify, how will you further simplify? If you had got 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus up till n, that is sum of n natural numbers, you are going to write n into n plus 1 divided by 2. Now here, it is n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3 up till 1. So this is sum of n minus 1 natural numbers. So what logic you are using? Sum of n minus 1 natural numbers. And that will be equal to n into n minus 1 divided by 2. Okay? And this will be further simplified into n square minus n divided by 2. Ignore the lower order exponents and the constant. So you will get how much? n square. So we will write here the time efficiency of this algorithm is what? Theta of n square. So this is how you need to carry out the analysis. And here we have completed the analysis for a non-recursive case. And the problem statement was to determine what whether the elements in an array are unique or not. So that's it in this session. Hope you find this session useful. If you find it useful, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye-bye and take care.